Chapter 1, Lesson 3, Interactions Among Living Things. How do adaptations help an organism survive? As day breaks, a sound comes from a nest tucked in the branch of a saguaro cactus. Two young red-tailed hawks are preparing to fly. Farther down the stem, a tiny elf owl peeks out of its nest in a small hole. A rattlesnake slithers around the base of the saguaro, looking for breakfast, spying a shrew. The snake strikes it with the needle-like fangs. The shrew dies instantly. Each organism has, an e has unique characteristics. These characteristics affect the individual's ability to survive and reproduce in its environment. Natural selection. A characteristic that makes an individual better suited to a specific environment may eventually become common in that species through a process called natural selection. Natural selection works like this. Individuals whose unique characteristics are well suited for an environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. Offspring that inherit these characteristics also live to reproduce. In this way, natural selection results in adaptations, the behavior and physical characteristics that allow organisms to live successfully in their environments. For example, the Arctic hare has fur that turns from gray to white in the winter, which helps camouflage the hair against the snow. Individuals with characteristics poorly suited to a particular environment are less likely to survive and reproduce. Over time, poorly suited characteristics may disappear from the species. If a species cannot adapt to changes in its environment, the entire species can disappear from Earth and become extinct. Niche. The organisms in the Swarro community have adaptations that result in specific roles. The role of an organism in its habitat is called its niche. A niche includes what type of food the organism eats, how it obtains the food, and what organisms eat it. A niche also includes when and how the organism reproduces and the physical conditions it requires to survive. Every organism has a variety of adaptations that are suited to its specific living conditions and help it survive. What are competition and predation? During a typical day in the Swarho community, a range of interactions takes place among organisms. Two major types of interactions among organisms are competition and predation. Competition. Different species can share the same habitat and food requirements. For example, the flycatcher and the elf owl both live on the saguaro and eat insects. However, these two species do not occupy exactly the same niche. The flycatcher is active during the day, while the owl is active mostly at night. If two species occupy the same niche, one of the species might eventually die off. The reason for this is competition. The struggle between organisms to survive as they attempt to use the same limited resource is called competition. For example, weeds in a garden compete with the vegetable crops of soil, nutrients, water, and sunlight. In any ecosystem, there are limited amounts of food, water, and shelter. Organisms that share the same habitat often have adaptations that enable them to reduce competition. Predation An interaction in which one organism kills another for food or nutrients is called predation. The organism that does the killing is the predator. The organism that is killed is the prey. Even though they do not kill their prey, organisms like cows and giraffes are also considered predators because they eat plants. Predation can have a major effect on a prey population size. Recall that when the death rate exceeds the birth rate in a population, the population population size can decrease. So if there are too many predators in an area, the result is often a decrease in the size of the prey population. 
but a decrease in the number of prey results and less food for the predators. Without adequate food, the predator population can decline. Generally, populations of predators and their prey rise and fall in related cycles. Predators have adaptations that help them catch and kill their prey. A cheetah can run very fast for a short time, enabling it to catch its prey. Some predators, such as owls and bats, have adaptations that enable them to hunt at night when their prey, small mammals, and insects are active. Prey Adaptations How do organisms avoid being killed by effective predators? The smelly spray of a skunk and the sharp quills of a porcupine help keep predators at a distance. Organisms have many kinds of adaptations that help them avoid becoming prey. What are the three types of symbiosis? In addition to competition and predation, symbiosis is a third type of interaction among organisms. Symbiosis is any relationship in which two species live closely together and at least one of the species benefits. The three main types of symbiotic relationships are mutualism, communalism, and parasitism. Mutualism. In some relationships, two species may depend on one another. This is true for some species of acacia trees and stinging ants in South America. The stinging ants nest only in the acacia tree whose thorns discourage the ants' predators. The tree also provides the ants only food. The ants in turn attack other animals that approach the tree and clear competing plants away from the base of the tree. The relationship is an example of mutualism. A relationship in which both species benefit is called mutualism. Communalism. Have you ever seen a bird build a nest in a tree? The bird gets a place to live while the tree is unharmed. This relationship is an example of communalism. Communalism is a relationship in which one species benefits and the other species is neither helped nor harmed. In nature, communalism is not very common because two species are usually either helped or harmed a little by any interaction. Parasitism Many family pets get treated with medication to prevent tick and flea bites. Without treatment, pets can suffer from severe health problems as a result of these bites. A relationship that involves one organism living with, on, or inside another organism and harming it is called parasitism. The organism that benefits is called a parasite. The organism it lives on or in is called a host. The parasite is usually smaller than the host. In a parasitic relationship, the parasite benefits while the host is harmed. Unlike a predator, a parasite does not usually kill the organism it feeds on. If the host dies, the parasite could lose its source of food or shelter. Some parasites, like fleas and ticks, have adaptations that enable them to attach to their host and feed on its blood.